This video provides an overview of the key concepts included in Chapter 15, Scheduling and Sequencing. Scheduling and sequencing are fairly common activities that operations managers perform every day in every business. They're fundamental to all three levels of aggregation and disaggregation planning that was described in Chapter 14. Good schedules and sequences lead to efficient execution of manufacturing and service plans and better customer service. It's one thing to promise great customer service and another to actually deliver it. Scheduling refers to the assignment of start and completion times to particular jobs, people, or equipment. Virtually all organizations schedule employees, jobs, or both. Sequencing refers to determining the order in which jobs and tasks are processed. For example, triage nurses must determine the order in which emergency patients are treated, and housekeepers in hotels must sequence the order of rooms to clean. Scheduling applies to all aspects of the value chain planning and releasing orders in the factory, determining work shifts for employees, and making deliveries to customers. One of the most common scheduling applications is staff scheduling because of the high variability in customer demand and sometimes the variability in labor availability. Staff scheduling involves four key elements. One is accurately forecasting demand and translating it into the quantity and timing of work to be done. Two, determining the staffing required to perform the work by time period. 3. Determining the personnel available and the full and part-time mix. And 4th involves matching capacity to demand requirements and developing a work schedule that maximizes service and minimizes costs. Another scheduling application is scheduling consecutive days off, which is very common. There are a number of different optimization models included in Supplements D and E. You should have a look at those. A third common scheduling application includes appointment systems. The simplest sequencing problem is that of processing a set of jobs on a single processor. This occurs in many organizations. For example, in a serial manufacturing process, a bottleneck workstation controls the output of the entire process. Therefore, it's critical to schedule the bottleneck equipment efficiently. In selecting the most appropriate sequencing rule, a manager must first consider the criteria on which to evaluate schedules. These criteria are often classified into three categories. The first is process-focused performance criteria, the second is customer-focused due date criteria, and the third is cost-based criteria. Process-focused performance criteria pertain only to information about the start and end times of jobs and focus on shop performance such as equipment utilization and work and process inventory. Two common measures are flow time and make spam. Flow time is the amount of time a job spends in the shop or factory and can be calculated using a simple formula. Fi equals Si plus Pi, where Fi is the flow time of job I, SI is the start time of job I, and PI is the processing time of job I. Make span is the time needed to process a given set of jobs. A short make span aims to achieve high capacity utilization and resources by getting all the jobs out of the shop quickly and can be calculated using another simple formula. M equals CL minus CF, where M is the make span of a group of jobs, CL is the completion time of the last job in the group, and SF is the start time of the first job in the group. Customer-based performance criteria include lateness and tardiness, or the number of jobs tardy or late. Lateness is the difference between the completion time and the due date, which can either be positive or negative. Tardiness is the amount of time by which the completion time exceeds the due date. These can be calculated using two basic formulas. Lateness, or Li, is equal to Fi minus Di, and Ti, or tardiness, is equal to the maximum, or the higher, of zero, or the lateness of a job. There are three different rules used in sequencing. They include first come first served or FCFS, shortest processing time or SPT, and earliest due date or EDD. These rules are often applied when a fixed set of jobs needs to be sequenced at one point in time and different sequencing rules lead to very different results in performance. In addition, scheduling in real manufacturing environments is very dynamic. Jobs are continuously being created, eliminated, and changed and unforeseen events such as breakdowns occur that invalidate previously developed schedules. Therefore, sequency decisions must be made over time and is often done through dispatching. Dispatching is a process of selecting jobs for processing and authorizing the work to be done. Typical dispatch rules include using the fewest number of operations, or FNO, and least work remaining, LWR. Finally, there are three other scheduling and sequencing concepts to consider. They include two resource scheduling problems that can be solved using Johnson's rule. Another consideration is schedule monitoring and control. In scheduling environments that change rapidly, organizations must have the capability to closely monitor and adjust schedules as necessary. 
For example, in the airline industry, a weather delay or flight cancellation at one airport or even a volcanic eruption can wreak havoc on the system. Schedulers need to be able to quickly change the schedules and reroute planes and flight crews to minimize the impact on passengers and also to minimize their costs. Last is vehicle routing and scheduling. A common logistics problem involves determining the routes from a central depot or warehouse to customers. Examples can include delivering soft drinks to convenience stores or delivering packages via UPS or FedEx to homes. Generally, time, such as limited working hours, or vehicle capacity restrictions preclude the use of only one route from the depot to all the customers and might include special rules such as reducing or eliminating left-hand turns. Many vehicle routing problems can be solved using the Clark Wright method for vehicle routing. Scheduling and sequencing is so common in everyday life, we tend to take for granted that there are people and systems behind the scenes putting everything together. Scheduling and sequencing are conceptually simple, but can be extremely complex as organizations have to consider uncertain and variable demand, along with constrained labor and productive resources.